What's up, weirdos? I've never watched Riverdale, but they just had the series finale, so I thought that starting off at that episode would be a great way to get my toes wet. Why am I talking about my toes? Here is what I know about Riverdale going into this. I know that it started out the first season as like a legit kind of like murder mystery show. Something that people were talking about in the same vein of Stranger Things where it's like well made. I know that Cole Sprouse is a weirdo and he doesn't fit in. But I also know that he doesn't want to fit in. Sorry, Jughead, not Cole Sprouse. Although every single clip I see of Jughead seems exactly like Cole Sprouse in real life on Tumblr. Remember this? Remember this? I made a video about this. I'm a young student focusing on archaeology, anthropology, journalism, and photography. Let's try and find greatness in absence. If you haven't seen my video on his Tumblr, you should watch it. You don't have to watch it right now, but I think it's a good video and it's where a lot of lore on this channel comes from. But I I say all that to say I have no idea what Riverdale is other than like the pop culture drama about it just, you know, being bad. But is it bad? I mean, yeah. I don't have to see it to know it. Let's watch the series finale. I'm gonna go through it. I'm watching it for the first time with you and we're gonna experience it together. I have no idea what's gonna happen this episode. I don't know what these characters are. All I know going into it is that it's supposed to be a teen drama. So I'm expecting a little bit of go piss girl. Gossip girl. Yeah, bing bong. 67 years have gone by. It's the present day. No. Wait, 67 years have gone by. First of all, I'm shocked, I'm flabbergasted, I'm aghast. But then 67 years have gone by, we're now in the present day. Isn't Riverdale set in the present day already? Is this in the future? Are we looking at Riverdale in the year 20, 80, 90? Got it. I don't know, Cooper. We should probably keep watching to find out. I'm not gonna pause that much this whole video. We're gonna get this story tonight is about saying goodbye to a town that was once lost in time. Okay, wait, what's with the panning across the human sexuality? They homed in on that. So I guess there must be a whole plot line about that, and this is like a callback. But then the annual sock hop? That's set in, like, that's what? Oh, unless he's writing this about somebody else who has had 67 years gone by? But why? Who gives a sh Some 80-year-old I give about 80 year old but I'm like in the show. I care about Archie. I care about Jughead. I care about the blonde. It's about saying goodbye to a town that was once lost in time, but also goodbye to the people who once lived in that town. No, no, because that's the blonde. That, what's her name? B busy? That's busy. Busy's doing the sock hop. Is this. Wait. No, 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 no. Riverdale season one, episode one. They're looking at a laptop. Who the fuck is the guy on the far right? Why is Archie wearing middle school drip? What are they looking at on that laptop? They're looking at a laptop in the 1960s? Ah, uh, yeah, I already hate it. Oh my God, I'm 30 seconds in, it's 50 minutes long. I, uh, we're gonna get through this, I'm so sorry. Bing bong. It starts near the end with a woman named Elizabeth Cooper. That's my name! My mom's name is Elizabeth too. This show kind of hits. She's 86 years old now. She checks the obituaries every day. Okay, that's sad as hell. Can we get to the part where he runs drugs in fourth grade? Dope ass interior design though. I love the way she set this whole place up. Way to go, grandma. Keep looking at those obituaries to see how many loved ones you have that passed on. Damn. You knew him in high school, didn't you, Grandma Betty? Seems like he was an interesting person. He was. Well, we all were. <laughs> I, I was trying to hold in the laugh. I can't. What the, what the, what the, what the, what? Oh, man, this sucks. I'm sorry. So that's just confirmation that Riverdale takes place in the distant, distant past. The Riverdale where they're looking at that laptop took place 67 years ago, and now it's present day, and this old-ass woman is Betty. That's, by the way, Great writing on that. You knew him in high school, didn't you, Grandma Betty? You knew him in high school, didn't you, Grandma Betty? And then she looks at her and says that he was interesting. And then we see Cole Sprouse dressed like a third grader. Cole Sprouse in his sweet life of Zack and Cody fit. Fading into the shot as she remembers him, she recollects. So I guess this is supposed to take place 67 years in the future, although Jughead's voice is still him as a young man. And she is dressed that way with the interior design of somebody who did grow up in the 1960s. You know what I mean? Like, if this took place in the future, her interior design wouldn't look like an old lady that we know now. It would look like old lady 67 years in the future, which is gonna be posters of Jimin everywhere. In 67 years, when y'all are grandmas, I already know you're gonna have Jimin's covering your walls. We had such marvelous adventures. You wouldn't have believed it, Alice. Well, that's it. That means I'm the last of them. Is she forgetting to act? I don't want to blame her. She's, a, she's an old woman who's doing a great job. So I'm gonna put the blame on the writing and directing here. What is she, what is, what? What is this character? What, who the, what? So you're starting off the series finale by saying, oh yeah, all those characters that you know and love and have put up with are S-H-I-T-T-Y, writing and directing for seven seasons? 20 episodes a season. That's so many seasons. That's 140 episodes that people have put up with to get to the series finale and they go, everybody's dead and there's this 
you know, granddaughter who nobody cares about. And Betty is just looking at obituaries? For who? If everybody died, who are you looking at the obituaries for? Yourself? What do you have, dementia? A lot of people have dementia and it sucks. We're one minute into this. How, how, how? I love this so much. Thank you so much for watching this video with me. Hey, by the way, if you want to get uh, like my necklaces, they're on weirdothings.com. Okay, let's keep going. But I have necklaces that are really cool and I really like them. Weirdothings.com, weirdothings.com. I want to go back to Riverdale one last time, forgetting more and more every day. And well, let's see how you're doing tomorrow. Oh, well, let's see how you're doing tomorrow, Grandma. I actually have to go play my PS8. What the hell was that reaction, granddaughter? Your grandma is giving you a peek into her soul and your response is, oh, you want to go see the place with all of your memories and all of your loved ones? You want to see that before your memory fades and you become a husk of yourself where you don't even recognize your own reflection? We'll see how you're doing tomorrow. <laughs> I have a boyfriend, grandma, and I have plans to kiss him. I don't like Alice. What's the opposite of standing, Alice? Oh, hating. I don't want to hate anybody, but I do hate Alice. Yes, we can take a drive to Riverdale. Thank you, dear. Wait, 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 wait. What did that say? Let's go back. Okay, great job with that insert getting great focus on all the words so that we can read what it says, you terrible director. I think it says Forsyth Jughead Jones. His name's Forsyth. That's literally... It's kind of cool, actually. I can't hate on that. Forsyth Jughead Jones. Prolific filator? Fallacia? I don't know. This is Falladia? Fallatio? Of Jughead's Madhouse magazine. Oh, editor! <laughs> Former prolific editor of Jughead's Madhouse magazine dies at 84. Okay, okay, okay. Praise God. Praise God. So that opening voiceover was of a ghost? Because he was saying 67 years have gone by, like giving voiceover present tense. So I guess the ghost is talking to us. I want to make a ghost hunting video. Would you be interested if I made a ghost hunting video? Genuinely, please comment below. What are you gonna say? No? I mean, what kind of a stupid- that's such a YouTuber thing. I'm going to make a ghost hunting video. I just, okay, reveal. God, get over yourself. Let's just keep back to it. I'm so sorry. That was annoying. Oh my god, she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if that's the way that the episode ended? It's just a two minute short film of her going, I've forgotten everything. I'd like to go back before I forget even more. Next shot. <laughs> Credits. <laughs> that would be so good. Oh, please don't wake up. Please don't wake up. Please don't wake up. Please don't wake up. Please, not you. Hello? I'm sorry. Are you, what? I swear to God, I haven't pre-watched this. If I have pre-watched this episode, may God murder my children. Kill them today. I have not pre-watched this. I literally was making a joke about how Jughead's a ghost. And he's a ghost? Or is that just, I guess, them setting things up and then paying them off, and I was just analytically watching the show? Well, but I was saying that to make fun of it because that'd be a stupid idea. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> Sorry, that was an ugly laugh. I was going through our, our yearbook, trying to remember. Remember what? Oh. Why is he being such a sassy little little something or other? He's being such a little, a little, a little B-I-T-C-H. Remember what? Remember back before your brain wasn't mush? Remember back before your brain wasn't literally eating itself? Remember back when I used to give you this big old Jughead D? Oh my god, and look right there, next to her, I guess, book that was bound with the skin of four? You know, four skin? Behind that book is a framed heart picture of Archie Bunker. Is that his last name? I really took a swing there. Anyways, let's get back to Jughead giving attitude and absolutely reading this woman who is getting the life beat out of her by dementia. Though, going through these pictures, I, I just wish I could go back to how it was, how we were. You can, Betty. Pick a day, and I'll take you. Oh my god, is this... Scrooge? That's Marley? He's Marley? He's about to take her back to witness the ghost of Christmas past, present, and future? Why would you write the season finale like this? Why would this be your take on the season finale? Oh, let's have a sprawling adventure where we look back on everything and gather up all the loose ends. Could you just, like, write an episode? Do you have to get, like, stupid with it? This is so stupid. And if there's anybody who's involved with the creation of Riverdale, I just want to say... I'm so thankful for you creating this so that I have a thing to make fun of. And it's fine, not all art can be good. And for what this is, it's bad. <laughs> that might be painful for you. Why should it be painful? Because you won't just be living that day. You'll be seeing yourself live it. I want to go back to a day I missed. The day everyone got their yearbook senior year. Hey, quick question. Did they audition any other actress? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But... 
What is she giving? It's the writing though, it's the writing. I cannot blame her, it's the writing. In addition to the writing, sorry, it's so hot. You're right, I do need to take this off. It's literally burning up across America. What am I doing? You're so right, I'm sorry, let me take this off. To get through this, we literally, we have to move forwards. We have to move forwards, let's move on. You know what, in order to do that, I'm gonna start playing this. <laughs> I'm gonna play it uh, two times speed. <laughs> Honestly, it might make it funnier. You just have to walk through that door and you'll have your day. Good day, you missed. So they made a choice here in the writer's room. And they're sticking by it, and I'm proud of it. I think it's weird. I think that they're weirdos. I don't think they fit in, and I don't think they want to fit in. Okay, so basically the rest of that scene was the elderly Betty just saying, I want to go back and look at my yearbook. I wish I got my yearbook signed. That's my biggest regret. Really? Really, Betty? Out of your entire life, you expect me to believe that not getting your yearbook signed is the thing that you want to go back and do? I don't have a single one of my yearbooks. You know why? I don't really have a reason one way or the other. I don't know why I set it up like I had some big reason. I just don't. And I don't care. And that's the point. Why does this old woman care? Because she has to care about high school so that she can go back in time and look at the things because that's what the episode is. I get it. It's my room exactly like I remembered. Hello, room. <laughs> Sorry, I really like watching it on two times speed. I really like it. I hope this doesn't annoy you. I really love it. That was so funny. Oh my God, yes, my old room. Oh, this is my old room. Oh, I love it. You know what? I apologize for what I said about that old woman's acting. I don't even need to call her an old woman. The beautiful, mature woman. It's not her acting because this Lily Reinhardt is also, you know, saying, you know, it's the writing is what I'm saying. There were so many things I wanted to change about myself back then. Why? I was perfect. We were all perfect. Lily Reinhardt saying that line being like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I literally am perfect. Yeah. Why did I ever suffer with insecurities? I was literally so good. I was delicious. I could eat myself up like a little Snickers bar. God, I was good. God, I was delicious. Jughead creep sitting over there on the windowsill. Okay. Can you kind of look out this window in Archie's? Can you for one second grow up and write a scene that doesn't sound like this? Who wrote this? Who wrote this? Someone who's 14 years old and thinks that it's deep. This is out of the diary of a middle schooler. How many times I used to look out this window and how many times I used to see Archie. Okay. Okay, Jesus Christ, it's a window. Jesus, it's a window. Jesus, are you seeing this? It's a window, Jesus. Come on, it's not that big of a deal, Jesus, am I right? When someone says Jesus Christ, I like to think that they're actually talking to him. Christ! <laughs> you just seeing this? <laughs> Archie's about to have a big talk with his mom about what he's going to do after graduation. Hey, mom. I don't want to be a pest, but I gotta let Vic know by tomorrow if I'll be joining his crew on Monday. <laughs> I love it being on two times speed. I'm sorry, I love it. What's he wearing? I don't get. Also, I don't care. Can we. Let's just move on. I don't give a crap about Archie. Even though. Isn't the whole thing based on the Archie comics? But I genuinely don't care. He's on screen right now, and I'm just going. It just doesn't make sense to me. Driving around the country with some dusty road crew. I'm sorry. They cut to the wide shot. I can't get past it. What's he wearing? <laughs> what? What the? What? The, like, look at this. That's a homeschool outfit. Also, why is his mother from the 1960s? Was it set in the 60s? Why they have a laptop? Also, why was it not set in the 60s? But now they're retroactively setting it in the 60s. What? Because Stranger Things came out and did their thing better than they were doing it, and they were like, oh, the reason that it's better is because it's set in the past. So it's nostalgia that makes it good. No, Stranger Things is better because they wrote and directed it. Well, unless his mom is just absolutely hipstering in the year 2023. It's like President Eisenhower said on the nose. I'll be building the highways that help connect people. Yeah, no, they just said Eisenhower. Okay. Also, can somebody dye his eyebrows not that black? It's so clear that they dye his hair red. That is the most unnaturally red looking hair I've ever seen in my entire life. And KJ Appa is a handsome man who I think is talented, I think is funny, and I hope he breaks free from this Riverdale trauma. And it becomes the star that he deserves to be because you know, I guess he's handsome and Australian and that's why he deserves success. Let's keep going. I love that I'm playing it on two times speed right now. It makes it so much easier and better to watch. The way that she goes down those steps, like on two times speed, it's so funny. Also, I don't know what the heck that was right there. I gotta sit my ass down and stay here. Mom, Polly, you're alive and you're so young and you're talking again. Awesome writing. Awesome. I love the part where there's no subtext. That's that's what it is. Riverdale doesn't have subtext. They just say what they're thinking, which is not, you know, what people do in reality. Because there's a difference between going, oh, you went shopping at Victoria's Secret? What did you get? And, hey, show me your breasts. You know what I mean? Riverdale is the second version of that. <laughs> Oh, Elizabeth, what are you doing out of bed? You have the mumps, young lady. No, no, I feel fine. I'm, I'm going to school. Wait, what? Her mom says, you gotta stay in bed. You've got mumps. And she says, no, I feel fine. Jughead is a ghost and he brought me here. I'm actually 86 years old. I'm absolutely going there to get my yearbook signed. Technically, the body that I'm in does have mumps, so I will be spreading it to everybody and I will basically be bringing COVID-19 into the year 1963. When is this? No, we don't rush off mumps. Just think like, just... 
Just look at me. Just also, can I just say just real quick one second? This is clearly the elderly woman back in the past as herself as a young woman. But Jughead earlier on said, are you good? Are you sure it's going to be okay? You're going to see yourself when you were younger. As if the elderly woman was going to be there watching herself as a younger self. And then in literally 30 seconds, they broke the one thing that they established. Incredible writing. Let's keep going. For heaven's sake, I'm looking at you, Betty. And I'm seeing a girl who, if she doesn't have the mumps, better hurry up so she's not late for school. Right, of course, cool. <laughs> First off. Okay, we were on two times speed, and even then that hug lasted way too long. Was my mom a stewardess for very long? On the contrary. One night, her pilot had a steak, three martinis, and a heart attack. And your mom took control of- Jesus Christ! Are you seeing this, God? <laughs> Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. I've got a little bit of blood in my panties. Do you get that reference? Hey, comment below if you get that reference. If so, I'm assuming that you are in your 30s or 40s. And if so, hey, subscribe. I love 30 and 40 year old subscribers. But wait, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. One night, her pilot had a steak, three martinis, and a heart attack. A steak, three martinis, and a heart attack. Do we, as an audience, care about Betty's mom? Are we supposed to care about her mom? Because I'm gonna be honest, me personally, I don't give a S-H-I-T about this lady. I was gonna say woman, but it felt weird to say woman. It felt insulting and like misogynistic. Is woman misogynistic if you say that she's a woman? Yeah, that's misogynistic. But I don't care, so let's go forwards. And one of the passengers on the plane asked her to dinner out of gratitude for saving his life. And a few months later, they got married. Okay, who cares? Okay, they went to dinner and they got married and they had you as a baby. Who cares? I want to see Archie take his shirt off. <laughs> I do! I, what do you want from me? I do! I don't care about this woman in the 1960s, apparently. I'm still not over that. I don't know what the hell's going on. Maybe if I'd watched the episodes leading up to this, I would have the context. Didn't think about that. I just banged the hell out of my forehead on that. Like, not even kidding. Showed the world and she wrote you postcards from everywhere they went. Till one day the postcards stopped coming. What about Polly? Ooh, such a sad moment. Let's cut to a wide. <sighs> the filmmakers on this are just... It's like they said, hey, a lot of people think Riverdale is really cringe. Let's act like we've been doing that on purpose this whole time. No, Gustav! No, Gustav! Apparently I can't leave a jacket with a zipper hanging within a foot of the ground because Gustav will bite it. You bastard! How dare you do this to me! I love you, Gustav. She was very fulfilled. She had a happy life with her family, but she never got back to performing as Polly Amorous. I only ever saw Polly perform once at the Babylonium, but I can still picture her. She was such a star. Awesome. By the way, I will say that is the one great piece of writing that I've ever seen in Riverdale. <laughs> Which, you know, by ever I mean this one video. Because a character being named Polly and then being a burlesque dancer with the name Polly Amorous? Uh, yeah, that goes hard. I was told by a drag queen one time that my drag queen name would be Queen George, and I would sing, you say, like, you know that Hamilton song? But I would be with some dang good high heels, and I would be showing midriff, and I would go, you say, all hail Queen George. And I go, the price of my love's not, you know what I mean? I would be great at that. If I practiced, and if I put in the work, and if I trained, because being a drag queen is not as simple as lip syncing a song and being your feminine self. You gotta put in the hours, you gotta put in the choreography, you gotta, you gotta have stage presence, you gotta know what you're getting yourself into! And you gotta own that stage, bitch. What am I talking about? How did we even get- oh, polyamorous. Okay, let's keep going. I don't give a sh Polly. It's because I don't know who she is. I'm sure she's a beautiful, wonderful, powerful, impactful, and intelligent, smart, funny woman. Oh, it felt okay to say woman then. Oh, because it's not being insulting to them. Let's keep going. Are you ready? Go back to school one last time. Is this real? Or a dream? Are you, I mean, have you been here yet? We're already like a quarter of the way through the episode. Is this real? Or a dream? I don't know. What about the last hour of your life, Betty? Betty, more like brain uh, empty. Got her. Totally owned her on that one. <laughs> but this is really what happened on my day, back in 1957. Everyone is so young and beautiful and carefree. They have no idea, do they? Did he just say 1937? Also, they're so beautiful and young and carefree, they have no idea. What, that they're going to age? What are you even talking about? Gustav, if you nibble on my forearm, I'm gonna be furious. Okay. Uh, okay. You run, you run. Don't, don't, no, no, no. This is a new shirt. This is my new shirt. This is my new bonobo shirt. Gustav, please be nice to me. Be nice to me. That's what I taught him in training. I taught him to be nice. <laughs> Golly, I'm sweating. You're not supposed to be here. Or did you have some kind of miracle recovery? Okay, Oliver Tree. What is going on with her hair? Oh my god. Oh, thank goodness. <gasps> Well, come on then. There are a million things to do for the last bell rings. We're getting on your books today. Don't forget. Wait, are they in love with each other? They put their arms uh, interlocking with each other as if they were in love. In the 1930s, I think that means you're in love with somebody. Okay, good way to go. Riverdale has sapphic love. I've been a changed man ever since I learned what sapphic is. Thank you for telling me about that word. I appreciate you. Attention, the real high students. Tony. As your senior class president. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, I was zoning out. I just saw a word pop up on screen. Tony. As your senior Yeah, that's what I thought. Martin Cummins? <laughs> 
Hey, Riverdale's great. Hey, shout out Martin Cummins. Hey, what's the first syllable of his last name? Senior class president, I'm reminding all students to pick up their yearbooks in the varsity lounge today. As we seniors look forward to graduation, it's only fitting that I share one final poem with you. Hold fast to dreams. Fourth dreams die. I'm going past this. I do a, a poem. Why are we reading a poem right now? Can you just can you just get to the episode? Students of Riverdale High, we dreamed. Oh my God! I zoom forward so far and she's still talking. She's great and we stand her and we love her. I don't know. I just don't want to hear a poem right over a school speaker system in what should be the 2010s, but is allegedly 1930. What? That doesn't even add up to 67 years ago, you, you, you goober. Ew, Mark, what are you doing here? I'm working towards that you got the mumps. Back off, I don't want your mumpy cooties. No. I love her. Oh my god, she's great. Who is she? Ew, oh my god, no. Back off. Ew, mumps. Ew, that was real. Hey. That's real. I like her attitude. I like her red hair. She seems like the only character who's based in reality who acts like a human being. Everybody else is being a little bit too. Oh, the world is an ocean of oyster flowers and I'm here with the music of a thousand sunrises. Like, can you grow up? You're supposed to be 16. 18, 18, 18. They're supposed to be 18, right? Are they 18? God, don't give a showrunner a cast of high schoolers that are technically 18. They will have them doing scenes with their, with their, with their, with their. Oh, Gustav just wanted to play, play with his carrot. Okay, I'm sorry. See, and this is why I don't get mad at Gustav because it's me as an owner who needs to be listening to him. Wow. Well, thanks, Fangs. That's why that's. Fangs is used to giving out autographs. Now that he had a hit single on the charts. Baby, come on. Basically, you're only made the numbers. I don't care about these people. I, I. Respectfully, could not care less. Oh, that was my bad, that was my bad. That could have been real bad. Wow. Four weeks into his tour, Fangs' bus was heading over the Rocky Mountains when one of its tires blew. There were no survivors. <laughs> Why would they write that? Why would they do that to him? Like, literally, there's no reason for that. Hey, so this guy we introduced, I don't know if you care about him or not, but here he is, he's in love with somebody, and then in the future, he gets on a tour in four weeks and pops a tire and rides off of the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> That's insane. God, this show is like, it's just like, it's badly made, but I love it. He's the first. I'm so, why was there no music over that? Why was he going <laughs> with no sound coming out and her just sobbing? What a weird little moment. I love this show. Oh, shit. do I love Riverdale? Is that what Riverdale is all about? You hate watch it, but it's kind of a guilty pleasure. That's a gold record over there. You're in this room for as long as there's a Riverdale high. Sick. <laughs> yeah, he and the love of his life popped a tire and drove their bus off of the Rocky Mountains, but he has a record hanging in his high school, so that's awesome. Oh, I'm glad everything worked out for him. I really do like this. Oh no, I really do like it a lot. I'm having a good time. Wow. Hey, buddy, what are you doing for lunch? It's a beautiful day. Clay and I are going to get outside if you want to join us. Kevin. What's going on with Kevin? Is, oh, that's the guy who was on the far right. Is he a key character? He walked in with the exaggerated swagger of a main character. <laughs> <laughs> I tickle myself sometimes. You know the meme of the Spider-Man Miles Morales with the exaggerated swagger of a black teen? Do you know that? It's funny. The way he leaps off of rooftops and flips backwards to face the camera before falling into a headfirst dive is just full of the exaggerated swagger of a black teen. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a meme edit of it, but w w what, what am I talking about? This is about Riverdale. Let's get back to it. Wow. Gosh. I can't believe this is the last time we'll ever have lunch together. Betty, can you? I know. Everything's going so fast, Kev. And Clay, I feel as if I barely got to know you. Yeah, I don't give a about Clay. Can we get Clay out of here? That is the absolute energy of a side character who's in two episodes. I'm sorry, Clay. Peace and love to Clay. And also, I'm concerned about the age of the the white gentleman. What's his name? The uh, slick back hair. The guy who's- I swear I'm not a piece of <laughs> slick back hair. I'm not a piece of I didn't used to be a piece of you know what I'm talking about? Uh, what am I? Literally, the slick back hair dude looks like he's 39 years old. I wouldn't want to say 40, but I think he looks like he's 39. Can we just, can we just, can we just, can we just? <laughs> Clay and I are going to be roommates next year. Oh. With me going to Columbia to study literature and Kevin going to NYU to study musical theater writing. Okay, yeah, that's what I love about Riverdale. We just sit here and then say things that happen. Okay, who cares? Clay here is going to be studying literature. Yeah, we're going to be roommates. And while I study literature because of this and this and this, I'm going to be doing this and this and this. And him and I are going to be doing this. Have you ever heard of Show Don't Tell? How can you be a writer for a a massive TV show and not know about the rule of show don't tell. They literally went to the writer's room and said, uh, how can we tell as much as we can tell and show nothing? My mom and Clay's dad, they were swell about it. Just asked us to be careful, like they always do. And we always are. Oh, so they're gay and they're in love with each other. That's, okay, that's sweet. Okay, I get why they invited Clay into the series finale because they're gay and they are in love with each other. And that's nice, that's nice. Okay, so that's character, okay, okay, I get it. That's showing, not telling. Except for the voiceover where they're literally just saying what we're seeing. <laughs> no. 
Hey, buddy, you okay? Yeah, I was just thinking about you and Clay and how you two are soulmates. I know I'm being silly. Well, um, speaking about soulmates, what about you guys? Have the four of you figured out what you're gonna do yet? The four of you? Speaking of soulmates, have the four of you figured out what you're doing? Is this polyamory? Call back to earlier. It, wait. You know the truth. But if you want, even though it's the last day of school, we're happy to keep up the ruse that you're only dating Archie and not the others. The others? Come on, don't tell me you've suddenly forgotten that you, Archie, Veronica, and Jughead have been in a quad this entire last year. What? 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 I thought I was misunderstood and I was telling a joke. What? Oh, no, 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 no. That is a cheater's way out. You writers in the writer's room, you cheated. You cheated. I already know that this is a reveal. Based on the way that this is going, this is a big... I, was this a big moment in the Riverdale, like, fandom? This moment right here, is this a huge thing? Because the way they're setting it up, it's like, it's, it's like, oh my god. Because I know just from pop culture, like, meme and, like, videos and stuff in general that I know that Jughead was involved with both Betty and Veronica. I knew that. So I thought that, like, maybe one of the reveals was, oh, does Betty end up with Jughead or does Veronica end up with Jughead? That's who was holding the interlocking arms. <gasps> I was right. That is sapphic love. And also, it's just polyamorous love, right? No, 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 no. Wait, 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 I'm not, I'm not processing this. I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. So the writers, when faced with the task of how do we solve this love arc? How do we satisfy the viewers after building up so many seasons, so many episodes of love and romance and like betrayal and love triangle? Everybody love everybody and everybody kiss everybody and everybody together with everybody. That's a baby who wrote that. Not Boss Baby either by Alec Baldwin, the guy who I don't even want to, I don't even want to go there. Alec Baldwin, dude. A quad? The hell is Jughead wearing? I know this is like when they do it in comic book movies. Oh look, they're wearing their biblically accurate costumes. But you do not have to do that with Jughead. He looks like a idiot. I don't even have a joke here. He just looks stupid. I mean, I don't even have to say, look at him. Look at that guy. I mean, is he stupid? Yes, but look at him. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, come on, come, but, but come on. God, are you seeing this? <laughs> And then cut to commercial. Charmin, ultra soft. Rub your butt with this toilet paper because it's gonna be real soft. That's that's how that happened when you were watching it live. We're a quad. <laughs> hey, babe. Hi. Charmin, rub your butt clean. It's so soft. I'm a bear. I love talking about rubbing my dirty butt. Why are you so happy about Little Miss Oh, I'm just remembering where I was a year ago. Feeling boxed in by my mother's expectations and society's rules. I need to have my voice heard. Yes, yes, we all read the teenage mystery. <laughs> I love her. She's so real. She's literally based in reality. She is grounded more than anybody else in this show, and I love her for it. What's her name again? Macy? She looks like a Macy. Macy is a redhead's name. Macy is the most red hair name I've ever heard, so it's gotta be Macy, right? Anyways, I think Macy's great. Anything for the god who helped me fix up Bella. Gotta say, though, <laughs> you and me could have had one hell of a senior year taking Bella up to Lover's Lane. If only you chosen me over Childhood Andrew. As a showrunner, can you just write a scene that doesn't like make me cringe within my soul and make my spirit die? It's like they didn't know how to wrap up all these things, so they said, oh, how about we give somebody dementia so that they have to go back in time and have people explain things to them? And it makes sense in the character because she has dementia. Or, you know, you could write a good episode, but that apparently is something they're allergic to. If a Riverdale writer walked into a showing of a Greta Gerwig film, they would literally go into anaphylactic shock. Yeah, this is the type of channel where we use things like anaphylactic shock to describe feelings. How many times has Cody Co said anaphylactic, huh? Huh? Hey, Cody, hey, Cody. I'm really happy that you are married and that your wife, who's very funny, is having a baby. And I'm glad that you guys are having a baby. But how many times have you said anaphylactic in your episodes? I don't think any. Now, Noel Miller. Bro is dropping anaphylactic shock left and right. You know that's true. So the four of us realized that we could and maybe should just be together. Okay, so they're just writing a scene where she can explain to us what we just saw. Literally just explain to us. So the way that Riverdale writers do it is they go, here's a character who doesn't know anything. Now let's have a character tell them a bunch of information. That's what storytelling is. Not, you know, giving us the satisfaction of the moment where the quad was formed. That would be interesting if they gave us the actual moment of the quad being formed and not telling us that it already happened. That's bad storytelling. You're holding us at arm's length from the interesting stuff, Riverdale. If you want to make a big choice like that, don't just tell us that the choice was made. Show us the choice being made. Why am I actually critiquing this as like a genuine project? It's not. It's Riverdale. This guy as an actor is doing a little bit too much and I love it. You're just saying that for the last year, you've all been in a quad? All right, bro, move on, move on. It started innocently enough with the four of us going on double dates, me and Archie, Jughead and Veronica, and then it kind of naturally evolved from there. So they're all holding each other and watching a movie together, okay? How come there hasn't been like an actual good scene with Archie when it's supposed to be based on Archie? He literally just sits there in the background with terrible clothing, although I like his fit in this scene. Wait, who gives a 
What is going on in the story? Wait, you're just giving it to us through a flashback that, oh yeah, the way that we became a polyamorous quad is we went on double dates. Hmm? Could the writing be any more lazy? Some nights Archie would sneak into my bedroom and Veronica would go home with Jughead. Okay, so they cheated on each other, but, but they wasn't cheating on each other. But it sounds like some nights we would just do this. And then all of a sudden we decided that we we're gonna be quad. So they were cheating on each other, but they were all fine with it at the same time. That's lucky. But I would say that that's not advice for if you go on a double date with somebody, you shouldn't go home with their partner. Unless you've talked about it. Hey, polyamory is fine. Hey, shout out the polyamorous commu community. But this seems like a weird representation of them. If you are in the polyamorous community and you think that it is accurate, please let me know and I will and I will in my mind go, okay, I'm wrong. But to me, this feels like uh, polyamory is when people date each other and then they also then date each other and then they and then they, when they, they date each other. It's like, I think there's a little bit more to it than that, but I, I don't know. <laughs> Other nights, Archie would spend the night at the Pembroke and I go over to Chuck And sometimes, more often than you'd imagine, I would find my way to Veronica's. What? They can have kissing scenes? Oh, is this the CW? I guess can have kissing. Oh, of course he can have kissing scenes. I just was shocked to see Betty making out with Jughead and then Betty making out with Veronica. Back to back kissing scenes? Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Are we gonna see everybody kiss each other? Are we gonna see Jughead and Archie kissing? There's no way that doesn't go absolutely insane. How have I not seen that? How have I not seen gifts of Archie and Jughead making out? Me, me, into the mix. Veronica and I talked about it, of course, a flutter bum like you, but you were always so focused on basketball. Trust me, I would've made the kind, Goldilocks. <laughs> this guy. Yeah, we had talked about inviting you. He's like, oh, you talked about it, but you didn't bring me. I don't give a f about basketball. I wanna make out with girls. What are you talking about? That, oh my God, just got so lightheaded. That might be more real than the redhead Macy. That was real. Is that gonna get clipped? Is that gonna be in the film Cooper out of context videos? By the way, I've seen like a couple of those when I got tagged in them. Those are so funny. You guys are so funny when you make edits. I love them. And I love you very much, weirdos. Thank you so much. Sorry that we're watching this together, but I'm also glad that we're watching it together. Am I right? Wow. I'm so glad I got to know you already. This you. And I think you're destined for greatness. You too, Cooper. She, wait, I thought your name was Betty. That's my name. What are you talking to me for? That, that's a woman named Betty. I'm a boy named Cooper. Elizabeth Cooper. Oh, that's what they had talked about earlier. Her name's Elizabeth Cooper and Betty's short for Elizabeth. Can I call my mom Betty? I don't think so, bro. Sorry for calling you bro. That was weird. So wait, are we just moving on? Are we not seeing Jughead and Archie making out? We just, wait, 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 wait. You're telling me they had everybody make out in the quad except for the two guys? Now me personally, I have a feeling that the creators of the show would have wanted that to happen. I personally feel like KJ Apa would be down based on his TikToks where he's just down to do anything. So I'm blaming this on Cole Sprouse. Cole Sprouse, the fact that you didn't make out with your best friend KJ Apa on camera as Jughead and Archie is a crime to the Riverdale community. It's a crime. And you know what? I'm in the Riverdale community. I'm a Riverdale stan. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> I don't fit in and I don't want to fit in. Wow. I was thinking maybe it looks so stupid because it's in two times speed, but I don't want to go to one time speed and double check. That's so funny, dude. That shot, you're telling me that he went on to be a basketball sensation? That's what his character was? Betty says, apparently he goes on to be like a great basketball star, but that's his form? Bro shoots worse than, than I got something here. I don't really watch a lot of basketball, but the, than Lonzo Ball. Bro has worse form than Lonzo left shoulder ball. <laughs> if you watch NBA, that reference hit so fucking hard. Wow. Did Reggie go professional? Yes. The following year, I played for Kansas State, and then he got drafted by the Lakers. Shut the f*** up, Cole Sprouse. I'm sorry, bro. Shut the f*** up. He got drafted by Kansas State. Hey, I'm from Kansas, but I don't like Kansas State. Do I? No, I like the Arkansas Razorbacks. But I grew up in Kansas, so that's cool. Cooper, Kansas, and then he went to the Lakers with LeBron James. Bum, 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 bum. And that was the move that made LeBron cry. Name that reference. Name that reference. That's Andy King. I think he's really funny. That's a that's a viral TikTok he had. Let's keep going. I'm trying to just 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 get off of this for one second so I can breathe. But let's just stay focused. Let's stay focused. During the off season, he would work his family for him until his folks passed away. Then he had to settle in. At which point he started coaching here at Riverdale High. He was buried in Duck Creek. Can they stop introducing a character and then immediately going? He was buried on the Riverdale with his wife. She loved him so much. He left two children. They carry on his name and his legacy of having absolutely no form in basketball. The two sons. We still run the used car dealership, Phantom Motor. I was joking about the two sons thing, but like literally that, and then she's crying. So every single thing is, here is a character. Let's talk about how their life continues and what, and what the end of their character arc is. And then also talk about how they died. Talk about how their wife died. <laughs> and then look at Betty Cooper as she cries. And then Jughead looks with his green eyes and goes, yeah, that's so basically so they're dead. And basically they're in a graveyard. Basically they're dead. Sick. Love the structure of this writing. 
Riverdale. Wow. I'm moving back to the City of Angels. Why? How? Josie McCoy's words about taking over Hollywood have been ringing in my ears since her visit. So I finally called my good friend Peter Roth and asked about getting a job working for him in La La Land. I've done the small town thing. I've done the theater. I'm getting a job with him in La La Land. I don't like how she talks. I'm sorry, Veronica. I do not like the... And I'm not making fun of the tone of her voice or how her voice sounds. I'm saying that the words she says are annoying. And we're only halfway through this episode. Can, can we get on with it? <laughs> and I now know what I want to do next. And what is that, Ms. Lodge? I want to produce movies and run a studio someday. Just like you. She just graduated high school. Is this what all of Riverdale is? High schoolers just being not high schoolers? <laughs> you know what I mean? That, what? Oh my god, it's it's a, it's a stupid show. I just had a revelation. It's a stupid show. I can't tell you how excited I am to begin this next chapter, Betty. Imagine if that's how it was. Like, you know that meme like, you want to work with Taylor Swift? Why don't you just call Taylor up? Ask her for a job. She'll like your gumption. But Veronica actually does that. It says, uh, yeah, hi. I think I'd like to run a movie studio and then uh the dude i guess says a uh, little high school girl yeah i'd like you to be in my office the subtext there makes me uncomfortable learn the ropes work my way up to being a studio executive one of the gatekeepers wow sounds like an opportunity of a lifetime it is i'm so proud of you <laughs> Of all the things that you've done, of all the businesses that you've started. <laughs> is there a single scene where Cooper isn't crying? Where Betty isn't crying? Sorry, that guy called her Cooper and now I'm thinking of her as myself. Can she stop crying for one shot? On a real note, why are you making Lily Reinhardt? Because you have to film these takes over and over and over again. She, you're making her cry over and over and over. That's such torture. If I was her, I would want to get off this show. <laughs> and Veronica? The summer after graduation, Veronica started as an assistant at Silver Shield Studios. But within a few years, she was running the place. She became known for her impeccable taste and for taking risks on young raw talent. She won two Oscars and produced some of the most iconic movies of our time. Can you, for one second, get off your own? Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm getting like actually frustrated. Can, can like it's like it's so stupid. Oh, let's talk about this character. Let's talk about all of the things they've done. And apparently, everybody that we talk to is literally the pinnacle of their career. She graduated high school, and then in less than three years, she was running a studio and winning Oscars, creating the movies that define a generation. Because she took risks on young raw talent. Shut up. They was buried in Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Why again? I can't even make it up. This is who they did. This is how great they are. This is where they were. This this is where they were buried. Uh, can we have one scene that doesn't go with the exact same formula? What is this? The Pythagorean theorem? <laughs> I'm losing my mind. I visited her grave once. I went to some of her premieres before that. <laughs> she was such a force. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't care. I'm, I'm zooming past this. I don't care. Okay, okay, don't care. I don't care. Okay, 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 I don't care. Can we, can we just keep going? I don't care. Okay, oh, look, 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 it's the quad, it's the quad. Okay, let's, let's, let's look at this. What's the tail, Nightingales? Why the long faces? Ronnie just dropped an atomic bomb on us. I told them my Los Angeles news. Ain't that just a pit? Come on, boys. Get that hat off, you cold sprouts. Get it off! God, you look so stupid. You look like not a weirdo. You look like a Weirdo. I know we haven't been talking about it lately, but we all knew we'd be going our separate ways after graduation. Yeah, but now it just feels so real and fun. Hey, do we really want to spend what could be our last night together? So Archie, the show is based off of Archie Comics, has lines such as... And fun. I mean, this is so weird. They're giving me the backstories of people I don't care about. Like basketball dude who apparently married a woman and then they got died and buried together. Like, who? I don't care about them. Respectfully, 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 I don't. But I don't know what happens to Jughead. I don't know what happens to Archie. I, I guess I know what happens to Veronica, but that's a stupid thing that happens to her. I don't know what happens to Betty Cooper other than she, I guess, gets dementia. This show is so... <sighs> Bad. Like in real life, it's a bad show. And a second ago when I was like, oh, I kind of like it, I don't anymore. Like a bunch of wet blankets. Senior year was amazing and incredibly fulfilling, not just physically, emotionally too. Seriously, how lucky were we to have been brought together? Given the opportunity to know and love each other across not one, but two lifetimes. This is the writers saying, oh, our show is so nice. I love our show. Our show's so cool. Remember our show? Let's make this episode a love letter to our show. It's like the absolute stupidest way to do a series finale. Let's make a love letter to the show that everybody loves. No, just make a great series finale. You know how stupid it would be if in Breaking Bad, Jesse was 87 years old, dying of dementia, and he went back in time and saw what happened to Walt? No, we want to know what happened to Walt. So show us what happens to walk. Like, this episode would actually be good if we saw this time period, not from the perspective of dementia-riddled Betty Cooper. But if we saw it actually happening in real time, and these events were unfolding before us in real time, and we were getting that satisfaction and that character development and that character arc closure in real time. Oh my god. If you love this show, I'm so sorry if I'm poo-poo-pooing all over it. Wait, is the show Pee-Pee and Poo-Poo and Kaka and Wee Wiz? Let's keep going. Maybe it'll get good. Sure. No, it won't. Wow. We should be celebrating that, not mourning it. Not yet, at least. That is right. The future can wait. 
Tonight is about appreciating everything we've been through. Tonight is about appreciating everything we've been through. Let's make an episode about appreciating and, you know, about our own show. Shut up. And let me tell you, we have been through a hell of a lot. You know, I gotta say, if I had to live through high school twice, which we did. They lived through high school twice? Oh, because they wanted the show to keep going, so they had to find a way to do it. Oh, did they time travel? Oh, no, no, no. Did they time travel in Riverdale in the second half of the show is them in the past doing it all over are you joking that's so corny literally stranger things comes out and they're like how can we do that oh i guess we'll have time travel in what was originally a teen crime drama in my opinion i think it's stupid and i stand by it, it is stupid i stand by it. wow i love you all so much meeting you was the best thing that could have possibly happened to me and i'm so glad to be here to say that to you tonight hey should we all take one last ride in my hot rod together the girls have to party Oh wow, that's the biggest scene we've had from Archie yet in the show, again, based on Archie. Hey, anybody else want to take a ride in my hot rod? Oh wait, I <laughs> this is gonna sound like I'm just being stupid, and I am stupid. I forgot that we were watching this in two times speed. <laughs> like I wasn't, I kind of forgot about that. Oh man. I'm sorry, this is what happens when you're bad at writing a television show. You just really, really drag out every single shot in every single scene and give us so much unnecessary filler that adds absolutely nothing just so that you can fill a runtime because you don't know how to make a show. And I don't know either. What, what you think I'm talking as if I'm better of a filmmaker than you? You're better than me, but I don't have a multi-million dollar budgeted television show on the CW. You should be able to make a good television show. But like these long ass shots that add nothing to the story, her hugging her mom for 17 minutes straight, like. I cannot tell you how many times this show on two times speed has drug on. Dragged on, drug on, dragged it on, dragged on. Wow. Yes, let's get more shots of them sitting there in a hot rod as they're just driving, like, who gives a shit? Okay, Betty and Jughead looking at each other. Oh, they're crying. Oh, she's going into the room. Oh, they're gonna talk to each other. Okay, okay, okay. I wrote something to commemorate our time together. Oh, you're gonna make us get the weeps, Archie? Great, he wrote something. Great. Archie the poet... Uh, Bunker? Is his last name Bunker? I wonder if it's gonna say something about commemorating their time in high school, which will subsequently also commemorate their time in high school. Wait! Commemorate the which will also which subsequently will also commemorate the whole show and just be the writers, you know, themselves, you know. Can they just have one moment that's like real? This is an ode to my best friends. And every good thing that must come to an end. Tomorrow we won't see each other in study hall. So here's a few memories for us to recall. And no, I won't be mentioning the epic highs and lows of high school football. That was a banger. I love that. That's all I know about Riverdale is I dropped out in the fourth grade to run drugs to support my nano. That means you have to know the triumphs and defeats, the epic highs and lows of high school football. <laughs> I mean, it's playing in 240p, but even that is the greatest piece of television I've ever seen. That's funny that they referenced it. That's funny. Hey, hey, a little tip of the cap, a little nod to the camera. Hey, we're self-aware. Hey, bye-bye-bye. I think it's funny, though. I think it landed. I think that's the first thing that's happened here that landed. And it was because of Archie? I'm telling you, Archie? KJ Appa has star written all over him. Yeah, that guy right there. That guy's a star. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Betty Cooper, who everyone thinks is super duper. Just don't mutter the word tangerine because it sets off her serial killer gene. <laughs> Veronica Lodge, always in pearls. There isn't a business you haven't given a world. Uh, she's always in pearls. Uh, get pearl necklaces on weirdothings.com. These are real freshwater pearls made with real freshwater pearls. Real tiger's eye. Everything's like real stuff. They're legit. They're really high quality. They're really cool. I love them. Weirdothings.com. Anyways, uh, why do I care about this? You're gonna tell me that this guy is the best poet and he won the award for best poet and the poetry that he's writing is this? I think that that's bad poetry and I should know. I write bad poetry. If I were to, I don't write poetry. Then again, you were once upon a time a human dialysis machine. <laughs> I specifically asked Angel Tabitha not to let anyone remember that. Cheryl Blossom, you're as rich as a Rockefeller. You also kept your beloved Jason down in a cellar. <laughs> But I'm glad to see you and the circuit back together. Only wait, 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 wait. Cheryl? Her name's Cheryl, not Macy? And something about a cellar? Wait, wait, wait. Let me put that in one time speed so I can see what he said. You're as rich as a Rockefeller. You also kept your beloved Jason down in a cellar. Who's Jason? Who did she keep in a cellar? I thought that she was the most grounded, the most real, the most human. She kept somebody in a cellar? Who's Jason? Ew! 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 I just looked at the images. Uh... I take back what I said about Cheryl. Why are they all sitting in a room with her and are okay with it? She kept her brother's corpse in her cellar and they're just joking about it? Am I wrong here? Am I wrong? Am I- I'm not wrong. Okay, I take back what I said about Cheryl. She's definitely the most real. <laughs> Ew, ugly laugh. <laughs> the hell was that little- 
Uh, yeah, oh, good, good, good. I remember when I kept my little brother down in a cellar. Yep, it was his corpse. Weird, I mean, like, not, I wouldn't say acting choice. I would say directing, writing, uh, and the, you know, existence of the whole show choice. Weird. And the Serpent and Queen back together. Only thing, Tony, Southside's one word, so whoever designed your jacket is a terrible speller. <laughs> So is this, I guess, the time where they go and make fun of all the things that people make fun of Riverdale for? That's funny. It'd be cool if the rest of the show wasn't just what I've talked about before, it just being bad writing and stupid because of the way it's structured and how it plays out, whatever. Jughead Jones needs no intro. He made his teacher jump out a window. Oh. <laughs> is he gonna say weirdo? He said window? He said he said two things that rhyme with O? He's gonna say weirdo, isn't he? If he says weirdo, I'm gonna- I'll whip a nene. Sorry for burping, I'm gonna whip a nene. If he says weirdo. Chained himself to Southside High. <laughs> Do me next. Okay, well, just absolutely crushing defeat for me personally on that one. Why would, why would you, why? <sighs> a letdown, the likes of which I have never before seen since the Kansas City Chiefs Tampa Bay Buccaneers Super Bowl. I don't want to hear it. We didn't have an offensive line. They were all injured. It's not our fault. That's an unwinnable game with their D-line and our lack of an O-line. Patrick Mahomes literally was flying sideways parallel to the ground, throwing sidearm a ball 35 yards into the end zone and it hit Damian Williams in the face mask and he couldn't catch it like there's nothing more Patrick Mahomes can do anyways let's keep going <sighs> well, where did that even come from this voice is so beautiful he belongs in a chorus but he spends most of his time cruising Fox Force <laughs> thanks okay respectfully I do not care about thanks whoever the hell thanks is let's get back to two times speed this is such a slow ass boring ass show but at two times speed it's a fast show that is just as bad forever and ever you weren't planning on leaving without saying goodbye, were you? I'm afraid it's time for me to go. Shit, why would you? You weren't planning on leaving without saying goodbye. She's sitting there alone in a dark room. She wasn't leaving. This was written by ChatGPT. Oh my God, this is why the writer's strike is important. Because if all we have left is Riverdale writers and ChatGPT, this is the type of content that we're going to be getting. We need to pay our writers and we need to end the strike. And I am in full support of the actors and the writers unions. Let's go, guys. <laughs> Let's go, guilds. I am, though. Studio executives can die. I don't can. I can't say that. Wow. It's amazing. Goodbye, anyway. And we'll see each other again. Maybe. Maybe we'll even end up together. You know, I've always felt that'd be you and me at the end of the road. Uh, it doesn't seem to fit into what they were saying with the polyamorous relationship. Polyamorous people. Is this polyamorous erasure? Yeah, I'm polyamorous until everybody else leaves and I get and I get to be with you. I don't think that's what polyamorous is. But, you know, okay. Guess we're gonna get to see everybody make out with each other except for the boys. And I'm blaming it on Cole Sprouse, again. I mean, it started with us, didn't it? That's a lovely sentiment, Archie. But that's not what happens in the future. You make it to California and you don't look back. Then you meet a sweet, strong girl who makes you laugh. And you settle down in Modesto. And you have a beautiful family. Okay, so he ends up with somebody else and we're sad about it. I don't care. I'm, I'm going forwards. I'm sorry. Oh, they kiss. They kiss. Okay, they kiss. Hey, they kiss. Archie and Betty kiss. Oh, yay. Riverdale, Riverdale, Riverdale. Glad you're but it reminded me. Okay, I gotta be honest. I'm pausing right here. There's nothing to talk about. Look at her fit. She's got a fit right now. She is throwing fits throughout this entire episode. She has got an absolute eye for fashion and an eye for fashion. God, I'm a good commentary channel. F I deserve all these subscribers. God, I'm so good at this. Wow. It's terrible out of the town. Okay, so they're at a graveyard. Terrence, pop, pop. <laughs> T. Okay, he died and he sleeps with the angels. Wow. Jughead's Madhouse Magazine. It's mostly teens and kids who read it, but I'm not gonna lie. As far as legacies go, I could have done a heck of a lot worse. Yeah, you could be Cole Sprouse smoking on the Call Her Daddy podcast. Yeah, let's just let's just let this one simmer for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, this part where he was thinking he was eating. Yeah, he thought he was eating here. He this is the part where he thought he was eating. Okay, let's keep let's get back to it. She says magazine. The go-to source for feminist and progressive causes, exposing hard truths. Still being published today, I might add. Okay, so she's got a cool magazine about feminist issues and she has an impeccable outfit. Betty, her outfits carry Riverdale on its back. Her back. Her shirt's back. <laughs> Look at her fits. Every single episode, I guarantee she's she's putting together a fire wardrobe and everybody else is letting it letting them down. Look at look at look at what Archie was wearing in this episode compared to her right here. This is Britney Broski coded. Hey, that's Britney Broski, ain't it? Ain't that Britney Broski on the red carpet right there? Oh. Me doing the kombucha girl. Wow. Young, beautiful. Oh my God, she's crying again. Can the director and the, just leave her alone? Stop making Lily Reinhardt cry this much. She's just a girl. Why are you gonna make her cry so much? And also, by the way, what happened to her granddaughter, who was supposed to take her 
back to Riverdale. Why did they even have that scene at the beginning? That's literally paid off in absolutely no way. Oh, Grandma, look. We're nearly there. I wasn't- I didn't zoom ahead. I didn't know that was gonna happen. It's literally just answers it. Okay, cool. Okay, so she's old now again, and she's driving back to Riverdale with her, uh, and her granddaughter Alice, and uh, her granddaughter's boyfriend, I guess. Goodbye, town sign. Really? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, uh, you know what? It is the writing. It is the writing. Goodbye, town sign. Can you shut up? Not the actress, the writers. Can you shut up? Sweetwater River and all its mysteries. And Fox Forest and its haunted trees. No, I don't like this. I don't- I'm, I'm getting past it. I can't, I can't, I can't. Goodbye, you! Goodbye, you! Goodbye, Moon! What are we, a children's book? Apparently, is this show made for kids? Who is this show made for? Oh, is the show made for people who hate it? But I also don't even like it as somebody who hates it. But again, I've only watched this one episode. So if you like Riverdale, I'm sure that there's something to it that, you know, I'm- I'm- I don't want to insult you for liking it. But I have got a sneaking suspicion that the people who love Riverdale are, like, fully agreeing with me right now. You know what I mean? I feel like this is how Riverdale is supposed to be consumed. Okay, I just fast forwarded so much. I hit that fast forward button so many times and she's still going goodbye this, goodbye this, goodbye this. She's saying goodbye to little locations that I don't care about, just little set pieces. Okay, cool. Oh, Pops. Oh, so the owner of that is the bro who died. Aw. Aw, Terrence. Aw, Terrence. Pop, pop. Oh, that sucks. Doggone it. Grandma, Daddy, we're here. Honey, she's asleep. I don't think she's asleep, honey. Are you kidding me? They just killed Betty Cooper as an elderly woman in the back of this car? I don't think that she's asleep. Are you s No, 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 no. They have to be joking. This has to be like a little joke. This has to be a little reveal that she's actually alive. And it's just like, oh, she just fell asleep. But then why would you have the line, oh, she fell asleep? No, she didn't. Like, that line can't exist if she is asleep, because that's stupid. Please be dead, please be dead, please be dead, please be dead, please be dead. <laughs> Okay, so she's dead, and then her, as her youthful self, ghost, gets out and enjoys it in its prime? What? Ah, oh, that's the dude who I just saw is a corpse in the bottom of, a uh, Cheryl's cellar. Yeah, it's Jason. It says so on his apron right there. This is weird. Oh, okay, okay, I get it. They're hugging each other, everybody's in love with each other, and we don't have to worry about, oh, they're not gonna see each other because they all moved their separate ways. No, she's died and her heaven is more Riverdale? No, I'm guessing Betty Cooper was a sinful person in real life because this is hell. I don't know what we just watched, but that's the end of the show. That's how the show ends. <laughs> Look, <laughs> what? What's the takeaway here? Gustav, can you tell me- can you tell me what the point of this entire show was? Because in the season finale, I didn't really, uh, get anything. Like, was there an ongoing story that was supposed to be resolved here? There's nothing that got resolved. Was the ongoing story, like, who's gonna end up with who, and then they resolved it by going, Everybody's with everybody! Everybody's in love! They're a quad! Even though that's not really what we set up, it's just a quad! I don't know if they didn't set it up, but I'm just assuming it based on how this episode presented it. Um, that was bad, but I'm so glad that you watched this with me, so thank you so much. Please subscribe and be a weirdo with me! Oh my god. And by the way, how do we, how do we, how do we like, how do we like the fit? I got, uh, navy pants and a brown shirt, and I'm asking for approval, because I guess I'm a man who thinks that I deserve it for literally dressing, like, it's just a guy. I just, this is the character outfit if you were to just type in to Google guy. And I was genuinely gonna be like, oh, how do you like my outfit? This isn't an outfit. Betty Cooper throws outfits. 